This crocodile is going to be released on the island of Juventud, where the species completely disappeared during the 1950s. Until 1965, the Rombi Fair had been decimated by hunters. Today, Juventud's inhabitants are proud to see this symbol of strength and independence reappear on their island. After a two-hour ride, the Rombi Fair reaches its destination. It is placed in a special enclosure where six females lie waiting for him, somewhere under the lily pads. This crocodile is a dominant male, an aggressive breeder. Of the two known species of crocodile in Cuba, only the Rombi Fair attacks people. With more than 900 kilograms of pressure in its jaws, it's best not to get too close at the risk of losing an arm or a leg. Since 1990, 690 rombifers have been captured in Zapata and placed on the island of Juventud. In the heart of the Cayos Potero Reserve, a quarantine zone has been created specifically for the protection of small crocodiles. They are fed and cared for here until they are big enough to defend themselves and then released. Accustomed to human voices, the youngsters arrive early enough to devour their lunch. Even a young crocodile's bite can be serious, since it can become infected very quickly. to the rowboats located throughout the marshes, young crocodiles are easily transported to the big lagoon, where they can live in freedom. Cocodrileros always travel in pairs for their mutual protection. In these swamps, the rombifer waits patiently on the water's surface under a bush or a low branch for the slightest human error or moment of inattention to pounce on its victim. In order to fool the animal, the last man always drags some bait behind him. The carcass of a vulture hanging on a branch for two days has attracted all the rombifers in the swamp to this spot. The capture technique is simple. The gamey smelling flesh attached to a rope is cast into the water. The noise and the smell attract all the reptiles who are in a constant state of hunger. The lasso technique is complex and requires skill and strength. The method also has the advantage of not damaging the animal's skin. 
The bait is used to lead the crocodile's head into the slip-knotted lasso attached to a stick long enough to anticipate any attack by the animal. Once the animal is under control, it can finally be measured. Every detail is noted in a report which helps to evaluate the animal's adjustment to its new environment and to assess the number of rombifers released on Juventud Island. Analyses will be carried out to avoid all risk of epidemic, which could destroy the results of years of work and end the existence of this indigenous species forever. Two little cuts, and the animal now has an identity card, which the cocodrileros can look for during their next visit. Thanks to the devotion of the cocodrileros, the golden skin of this fascinating prehistoric creature will, for a long time to come, continue to reflect in the green waters of the swamps on the island of Juventud. <laughs>